You're right here, right here, thinking it's not two nations, not even easy. One nation on me, on love. Hello, my friends. This is Bobby D coming to you live from Talon Bon Cebu, Philippines. I'm having an awesome time in the Philippines today. Hope you are as well. Whether you're from A to D, I want to talk to you about Filipino, Filipina care, how to deal with the hate. In the Philippines, Filipina care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how to deal with a hater in the Philippines. Yeah. Now, when you talk about the Philippines, you know what I'm saying? This is a country that many, many people aspire to come to. And one of the reasons why people aspire to come here, in particular, African Americans, because Filipinos are very, very receptive, for the most part, to most anybody and everybody. All you got to have is a Monte Ponte, and you're their friend. However, there are times, my guys, when you can have all the Monte you want. Mm -hmm. But if you have some melanin in your skin, mm -hmm. see this hot chocolate I got all over me? Hot chocolate everywhere you can see. Yeah, and that rhyme. Melanin in your skin. Sometimes. My guys, Filipino can, can get a little attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can get a toot on you. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So I, I want to share with you a very toxic experience that that I, that I encountered on yesterday. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I don't normally get things like this come to me in the Philippines, but I don't know what happened. It just happened. You know? And so when things happen to me like this, I have to share. Because it's unusual. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything wrong. But I was the point. I, I was the object of someone's hatred. And you'll find out as we go through this today. But I'm going to share this with you. And, and the reason why I'm sharing this with you it's not that I want to put aspersions on the Filipinos, Filipinas in this country, because as I've shared with you many, many times in the past, Filipinas are some of the best loving, caring, sharing people in the world. However, there are exceptions to every rule. Okay? Look, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to share with you an exception to the friendly rule with the Filipinos. I was a victim. Mm -hmm. And I don't like being a victim of your hatred, man. No, I don't like it. And, and she, okay, let me, let me just get to the story, man. I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm going to let y'all know. One of the reasons why I'm sharing this story with you is that you need to know. When you come out here, if you're African American, you got some melanin in your skin, everybody ain't fighting. I'm going to say that again. You didn't hear me. I said, when you come out here and you got some melanin in your skin, don't make the assumption that everybody loves you. They love black people. They love black people. <laughs> don't do it, son, because you will be highly mistaken. Everybody, every Filipino, every Filipina does not like black folks. Okay? Don't get it twisted, my brother, because you can get twisted if you get it twisted. Okay? There are people out here that hate your color. They, they don't even know you, man. They just, just you know, like that, that, that melanin, that chocolate, they hate you, man. Because you got some blackness on you. Now, you don't think it's just not in the Philippines, but if you lie, you're like, I'm going to show you the truth. I got my wife right here. She with me. Fact, my story up. I got, I got a witness. Yeah. So, first time. I've ever been discriminated against in this manner. There has been some partial, but not like this. This was Blake, it was overt. And I have to share this with you. So when you come out here, I got a lot of you guys coming out here. And, uh, and ain't no wrong, ain't no wrong that come. But I want you to be 
uh, I want you to keep this in the, in the memory yes. banks. I want you to be thinking these things. I want you to be aware that things like this could happen. And I want you to, I want you to be diligent. I want you to be ready. Don't drop your guard for a minute. Anytime you move out of go out of the country, your blackness speak for itself. You ain't got to say one word. Everybody look at you and know who you are, what you are. So you got a target on your back. And yesterday, somebody hit the bulls out on me. Okay? They talk, I was targeted. Okay? Simply because I was black and a man. Mm-hmm. Ah! Let's go. We'll get this done. We gone, man. I ain't got time to play with people crazy, but I let I need to let y'all know. Let's go. So they want to talk about uh thumbnail for thumbnail for the day, thumbnail for the day. No hocus pocus, thumbnail, thumbnail for the day. Let's go. Here we go. This is right here. Filipino Karen, man. Yeah, that's yes, her. That's not her exact picture. That's a that's a uh I guess a, a representation of the spirit she had and the representation of the anger she had towards me and the representation of the hatred in her eyes towards an individual, a man, a black man uh, that she didn't like. Okay. You said, well, Bobby, you must have did something she didn't she, I ain't did nothing, man. As you as we go through this incident tonight, you're gonna see I I didn't do anything to the warrant, to warrant what she did, okay, to warrant her actions. My wife is right there. She can verify what I'm saying. All right, just go. So you thumbs up for the day, thumbs up for the day. No hocus pocus, just focus, focus. I don't have a whole lot of people today. I'm going to run through this. I'm going to run through this. Anybody want to see me, hit the replay. I'm getting the body of the number of big. Let's go. All right. You see, we'll talk about a young mom. This thing I was having our little normal things we do tomorrow. We had it. We had to go somewhere. We had it. We had to go to the mall and take care of business. We'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about the incident, exactly what happened. Hmm? Then we're going to talk about the anger and the hate that came out after the incident. Hmm? And then we're going to talk about lessons learned. You know, everything that happens to me, everything that happens to you, you need to learn a lesson from. And if you never learn a lesson from the things that happened to you, my brothers and my sisters, you will wind up repeating it. Mm-hmm. That's called being ignorant. Like my mommy said, you ignorant, son. <laughs> you just don't know. And the reason why you're ignorant, because you don't learn from the mistakes or the lessons of the past. I was ignorant. I let my guards down and she came in on me. Okay? But I'm going to show you. I learned, baby. This is not going to happen to me no more. No, I'm not. I don't, I'm, I'm not. Anyway, let's go. Let's go. So number one is what? What's number one? Y'all don't forgot that quick. Number one, a yellow mall. Yeah. So Lisa and I went down to Yellow Mall. Like we normally do. We had some business to take care of that day. It was a Saturday. Right? It was a Saturday. And uh we had to go to Sky Mall, Sky Cable, and the mall. And the reason why we had to go to Sky Cable, we have a cable uh remote control that was not functioning properly. Every time we hit the number one, it would go to zero. It would never correspond to the number we're hitting it. So we never could change the channel. And on our TV, it doesn't have a manual control. Everything's electronic, but that TV. So in so order for us to change the channel, we had to go to Sky Mall and get another remote. Okay? So that was our goal. We had a couple other things we did as well. Because you know, me and see always run the bad and stuff. But anyway, so we went to Sky Mall, okay? So what happened was, I got, she said, she said, first of all, both of us, there was a line that long out the door. But that was a Saturday, everybody trying to get their jumps, stuff done when it's off from work. Okay. So I said, look at it, okay, she's still in line. So we was in the line, right? So he, he said, uh, I got to go, I got to go shopping and do something. Can we stand in line and wait till they call us? I said, Lisa, I don't want to stay in the line. And so I walked away from her, Lisa D, and let her stay in the line. And I walked down to, to the aisle. To, that corridor where there was a seat to sit down. So I sat down and I was doing my cell phone, looking at some videos. That's all I was doing. Sitting down by myself. Okay. So Lisa D came and got me. And about maybe 20 minutes later, Lisa D came and got me. She said, I really need you to get in this line, Bobby. I got to go and get to this. I said, okay, I don't want to go. Lisa, please, can you go? Can you just get back in the line? She said, no. 
I said, okay, I'll go to that. So I go on the line. And I took I took her spot that she had vacated to come get me. Are you following me so far, G? GP, you got me? All right. So I stand in the line, right? This be gone down to uh the apartment store. She had to purchase some I, items. I went to the bar my mom. Okay, whatever this be, what up? I ain't talking about all that. She went somewhere. Oh, Lord, she went somewhere, okay? So I was in the line by myself, minding my business, looking at my cell phone, okay? That's all I'm doing. I'm serious. I didn't talk to nobody. I didn't look at nobody. I didn't cuss nobody out. I was minding my business, man. I looked down at myself. That's all I was doing. Watching the YouTube video. That's all I was doing. Okay. So... Then she was still gone, and I there was a line that long, and the lady that did the did the doo doo, she was in front of me. Okay, now as you know, in 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 Philippines you got to be socially distant, so I made sure I wasn't too far up on her. Okay, and the people behind me was all on me, I couldn't move back. I wanted to say something else. I'm not hey, boy, just get let it go. So I was I made sure I had my distance between me and her, but the people behind me. It was on me. Uh, so I don't I know now I was saying that. So I let it go. I just watched myself on because I knew I had my mask on. I was all right. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the second point. I think I got you on point two. Hold on. <clears throat> Number two is what? The incident. So I'm describing the incident. This is the incident. A yellow mark. Hmm? That's that that's a depiction of the lady right there. That's not her actual face. That's a depiction of her attitude, her nastiness. You know, the way she dealt with me unnecessarily in that round. Okay, so it was a normal day for us. We had to tie cable. I'm in the line. Lisa D's gone to get her cell phone, whatever. So I'm watching. I'm just looking at my cell phone. I, we fell in line. I look at my cell phone. I didn't want to be in the line, first of all. I said, Did you, can you just, because you know what happens? No, our normal rule is this, guys. Whenever Lisa D and I go somewhere to handle business, I use her as the initiator as the negotiator but i tell her what i want her to do before she gets there and the reason why i do this is because they will accept as a, a native speaking person anything from them versus a foreigner you will find you will find that you're not accepted as a native speaking person is accepted in this country so it's a good habit to get in ladies and gentlemen to let your spouse or your mate or your partner that's filipino do all the negotiating, do all the communicating, do all the talking, and the business stuff. But I, so I let her do stuff. But I always tell her, this is what I want you to do. I give her instruction, and she follows it, okay? So this time, I had to do it, okay? So I said, okay. I said, Lisa, you know I don't like to, you know I don't like to deal with these people because they don't understand me, and I get frustrated, and they get frustrated. Please. She said, no, I'll be right back. I said, okay. So I'm sitting in line, read my, read my, uh, looking at YouTube video, and, uh, Karen, yeah, nasty Karen, was sitting up in front of me, okay? I made sure that I was not up on her, okay? The people in the back of me was all on me, okay? They, they weren't so she did this closely because I don't know what it is. People in the Philippines like to creep up on me, okay? And they like, these DJs, they, they like to creep up on me. They don't like to do social distance out here. I had my mask on, so I felt okay. And I put my alcohol in my ears and all that stuff, so I was all right with it. But I wasn't on her lady. So the next thing, okay, what's the point of you on number two? Isn't it? Okay. Okay, I'm still on. I'm done, man. Uh, we on number two. Uh, the incident. Okay. So here's what happened, y'all. She comes up on me, okay? And she turns around and she said, You need to move back. I said, What? Excuse me? <laughs> they gonna play with you. The lady said, "Move back." I said, "What?" I said, "Excuse me." I said, "Ma'am, I'm already socially distant. I'm not bothering you, ma'am. Please leave me alone." She said, "You need to move back." So I said, "Ma'am, I'm not moving nowhere." But first, let me tell you what happened. In my mind, when she said "move back," something in my mind snapped, and I just turned. I was gonna do what she told me to do. I don't know why. So I turned around and looked. I was getting ready to move back. But when I remember the people right on me, I said, no, I, I'm not moving back. I didn't want to make everybody, everybody had to move back if I moved back. Because they were all up on me. I wasn't up on her, okay? 
So she said, you need to, I said, I'm not moving nowhere. When I turned back and I realized I couldn't move back without bothering everybody else, I said, ma'am, I'm not moving nowhere. I said, as you move, you want to move up, you move up, ma'am. If you think I'm too close to you, you move up. I'm socially distant, man. And the guard, security guard, was right there listening to us and watching us both. Okay? So I was not wrong. He knew if he said I was too, if he'd have said you're too close, sir, I would have moved back. But I wasn't. She had a chip on her shoulder, and she chose me to, to move that chip. She chose me, you know, to be the brunt of her anger, the, the brunt of her hatred. She took it out on me. I wasn't doing nothing to the, I didn't even look at the lady, man. I was in the lounge. I just watched my video. That's all I was doing. Yeah, that's all. And so next thing I know, man, she comes off of me and then she said, who do you think? I said, yeah, I know who I am. I said, who do you think you are? You don't talk to me like that. I don't even know you. If you don't know me, you don't come up on me like that. Man, what's wrong with you? He said, no, what's wrong with you? I said, ma'am, you don't like foreigners. That's your problem, but don't come taking it out on me. You know, it's the next thing I know. She said a few other words in Sabuano. I didn't know she, I guess she was cussing me out. I don't know. I couldn't get, I couldn't pick up all the words, but it wasn't nice what she was saying. So everybody, you know, in the Philippines, whenever you were loud, she was loud. So I got back with her. She was loud to me. She loud talked me, man. I ain't done nothing to the lady now. She loud talked me for no reason. So, next thing I know, man, the guard told the lady, he said, man, move on up, move on up, go in the office. Your turn to go in the office. So, it's her turn to go in the office. She took a ticket and went off. So, then I moved up. And then I turned around to the side. She, she in the office now, right? And you can, there's a glass. You can see people sitting in the office. That's what she did from the office, y'all. She threw me the finger. She threw me the bird. She flipped me. Not once. Twice, I ain't done nothing to the lady. Not one thing. And that let me know it's personal with her. She, 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 she chose me to put her venom on. She chose me to put her hatred on. She chose me, she singled me out because of the color of my skin to denigrate me. To attempt, she attempted to, but I didn't bow down to her. I wasn't much, and she couldn't make me go move. So that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. This is what happened to me. Filipino, full of anger, full of hatred, took her nasty, caring attitude out on me because of the color of my skin. I could have seen that if I said something to the lady or I touched her pushed her. I did nothing to the lady. I didn't even look at her. Hmm? It was a reflection of her anger. She put it on me. I told her, no, man, I'm not moving. No means no. She said, you need to move back. I said, ma'am, I'm not moving nowhere. No means no. Okay. I said, you move up. She went, and I told her, you moved up. She got outraged. Y'all should have seen it. it was like a devil rising there. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I know people, okay, I have a gift of discernment. I can discern what's going on you. She had a devil raging up in her. And when I saw the devil in her, I just stood my ground. Because I knew if, if I had said something out the way, would have, I would have been that far. I could have cussed out something. I stood right there and I didn't budge after that. Then she walks in the office and she threw the bird at me, man. Twice. And the people in the line saw it. Filipinos do not like ruined people. I said, look at her, y'all. I got their attention to what she was doing. They did like this. They was ashamed of her. I didn't bother the lady. Everybody in the line saw me. I wasn't bothering nobody. I was just looking at myself, looking at the video. I said, head down, look at the video. And all of a sudden, she come up and turn on me, man. You know? So, I'm letting you know. When you come to the Philippines, be ready. You don't forget in your mind that everybody's lovely and everybody's nice and that's how you they love and love to be loved and yeah some of that's true but some of that's not so true if you mess if you get in, in the wrong person binoculars if you get in the wrong person scope you're going to be treated for you just like you was in the states okay that's what happened and i'm going to show you the lady this is the actual picture i got a snap picture of her from the back i didn't get a front shot i couldn't get a front shot 
That's her right there. She was full of anger. She was full of hate. She gave me a nasty look. She had a very nasty tone in her voice, and she flipped me off twice with the bird. She Chinese Filipino. And Chinese, if you don't know, don't like black folk. It's the way it is. That's my opinion. And I'm not trying to be xenophobic or nothing like that. This is going from my personal experience in life. Okay. That's that's that that's not based on data. That's my it's based on my per, personal anecdotal experience. Okay. So I'm telling you this. Whenever you come to the Philippines, Philippines, if you're African American, you have melanin in your skin. If you're African, be aware that you have a target on your back. Okay. That's one of my lessons to learn from this, baby. Hmm? Do not become complacent when you come to this country. Because hmm? I lost, I, I let my guard down. I'm always alert. Right but not that time. I made a silly mistake and I let my guard down by watching the video. I will never do that again. When I'm around Philippines, I'm always like this most of the time. But that time, I didn't want to go in the line. Lisa D made me go in the line. I didn't want to go in the line because I know how they do for us. I know how they do. So Lisa D comes back. Okay, She came back right after the incident. She had went to the car to get her cell phone. She said, what happened? I said, that lady had the fool with me. I ain't done nothing to her. She said, go sit down. So I went away from there. She got back in the line. So after she got in the line, everybody was telling her how rude the lady was to me. They was ashamed of what she did. Right? I didn't do nothing to the lady, man. I'll be honest with you. If I had said something out of the way to her, if I had touched her or hit her or just, you know, by mistake and pushed up on her or something, I would have said, I did nothing. That's why I'm so... I'm just disgusted with it. This incident. I did nothing. I said nothing. I didn't even look at her. Okay. She came up off on me, but I stood my ground. I'm not gonna be your boy. I'm not gonna be your slave. I'm not gonna be the victim of your venom. I don't care if you're white, black, Filipino, Chinese, Russian, Jewish. You, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bow down to no woman or no man that will treat me less than I deserve. I did nothing to her, and I wasn't going to move one inch. Okay? So, when you come out here, ladies and gentlemen, be aware you are a target. Someone come after you, if you for any reason, stay calm. It's the first thing you need to do. Stay calm. Don't get upset, because you're not in the United States of America. Don't get upset. Don't try to hit nobody. Don't try to slap nobody. Don't try to cuss nobody out. Stand your ground if you're right if you're wrong you better admit you're wrong and get and, and apologize but i wasn't wrong i did nothing i had nothing to do even for everybody in the back was like what's wrong with her i don't know she she left her meds at home didn't take a meds this morning. i don't know what's wrong with the woman so be calm don't bow down if you're right stand up strong like a man or a woman you are in this witnesses make sure if you have an incident that you got somebody that saw exactly what happened that can tell the truth. Everybody around me saw exactly what happened. I touched, didn't, did not touch the lady. I was watching my video, didn't say a word to her. She came up off on me. Okay. So have witnesses if you have an incident. Because a lot of you guys have been here, ever been here, a lot of you guys have never been out of the country before. Watch your mouth, watch what you say. Watch how you look at people. Watch what you're doing because you, if you're melanated like me, you have a target on your back. If you're Caucasian, they're gonna they're not gonna mess with you that much. For some reason, it's the people that are African American or African that they target the ones that don't like black people or blackness. They target us, and you know I, I get I get feedback. I get a lot of. Uh, Kick back, pick back from people that say, well, you know, Bobby, you were all that. People be like, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, some of them do. Some of them, some of them like all kinds of color. You know, they, some of them. But there's some of them that don't. And if you make the mistake of running into someone that don't, and you try to treat them like they're your buddy, you're going to be in a the hurt. They're going to do something to tell you, I'm not your buddy. I don't like blackness. Some Filipinos, some Filipinos don't even like your color, man. 
They don't even want you next to them. They don't even want you to touch them. They don't even like looking at you. Okay? And that's what happened. I detected her racist tone. I detected she, she didn't want me next to her because, see, in a lot of their minds, when you're next to somebody that's black, that rubs off on them. Blackness is bad in their minds. Okay? And so, uh, this incident will forever be etched in my mind. And I will forever be diligent. And I will never be complacent again and let my guard down when I'm in the middle, in the midst of some Filipinas and I'm the only one by myself. Okay? And I would suggest that you do the same, my brothers. I would suggest that you be aware of your surroundings at all times. I made a mistake Saturday. I left my guard down because I was watching the video. And she saw me watching my video. I wasn't looking at her. And she took, tried to take advantage of me. But I ain't playing that game. I didn't budge. She threw a bird and, oh, Lord. If I, if I was, it was 10 years younger, man, I would have went in our office. If me and her were there, I wouldn't have hit her nothing. I don't hit women. But we would have had it out. They probably had to call a pro for me. I would have cussed it out. You know, but thank God the Lord was with me. And I, he done had a change in my life. I done had a change in my life. And I don't do those bad things no more. Okay? At least I tried not to. But thank God Lisa D came and she found out. She, you know, Lisa D always check up on me. Lisa no, D. When I said, uh, when I came back and then I said, Get over here, Lisa D. You talking over there, can't see you. <laughs> I didn't fix my hair. You need to talk to the people so they can tell you to tell what happened. I said, I mean, when I came back, sat, sat down where you were sitting down and, right. and the hallway. Because I was tired walking. So there was a lady behind him uh, sitting down also. And then when I sat down there, the lady told me, Mom, your mom, your your partner had an argument. I said, What? Why? And then I walked down to him oh, uh, immediately. And then I said, What's going on? And then he's talking about. You know, there, the, I mean, that lady in front of us was uh, was mad at me that I don't know why. I said, oh, what happened? And then the guard and the other ladies there telling me what happened, that, that the lady was mad because there was no uh, distance. This was, and, then, and then the lady said that there was, I mean, he was not too close to her and and the lady said that uh, he cannot move back also because the people behind him. Right, they were right up on him. Oh, yeah, it's like that. Wow. And then when I look at the lady, lady inside the office, he took, uh, she took her face mask off. I said, why is she taking her face mask off? Because she was enraged. She was still angry. Remember, she gave me a finger twice. I didn't know about that, that she gave a finger. If if the lady is there, the guard said something about that, then I will confront her. Well, I'm glad you weren't there because I don't want you to get in trouble. These two will fight for me, y'all. If you got a good woman, they will shoot. Anybody come against me, she gonna get them. She, so I'm glad she wasn't there when it happened because she would have she would have got into it with that lady. So it all worked out. But I'm bringing this to you to let you know. There's Karens all over the world. Okay? Not not only in the United States and the dog on America, not only in France, Great Britain, you know, it's it's everywhere. I've been to a lot of different nations, different countries, and everywhere I've gone, I've felt a little bit of uneasiness because how they treat some countries treat you worse than others. This country, I might say treat you better than many, many others, but there's still a semblance. There's still, there's still some, some, some of that hatred and anger because of my color, our color, out there. And so I don't, I've never, I've had something close to this one time, but it wasn't ever this bad. I knew she didn't like me. I never, I didn't do nothing to the lady, man. And she came, I never had this, I didn't do nothing to the lady. She came off on me for like, I was an animal or something. You know? I hadn't done nothing. She don't even know me. So I'm telling you, man, come out here, you know, 
don't be paranoid and thinking everybody want to get you because they, that's not the case at all. But you need to be aware that everybody ain't for you, okay? You know, everybody's not for you. Everybody's not for you in the United States, and everybody is not for you in the, in the Philippines. Okay, where do you go? You, If you have melanin in your skin, if you're a chocolate man like me with the dark chocolate, I'm dark chocolate. I ain't some of y'all lighter than me. I'm dark. I got that dark chocolate color. So I draw more attention than most. Okay. So if you like me, be aware that you don't want to be uh, uh drawn, you don't want to, you don't want to be uh taken advantage of. Stand up for who you are and what you are if you're right. If you're wrong, apologize and keep it. Okay. That's all it is. We out, man. I'm gonna ride train night. I'm a little bit we gone, man. Because I'm still in I'm, I'm still, I'm still sort of worked up about it, but you know what, man? It's all good. Things happen for a reason, and they happen for a season. I believe this happened to me to let me know that I need to be more diligent than I was. I became comfortable. I became complacent because things like this don't happen here to me, but it did. It opened up my eyes that racism is everywhere. Okay. So you got guys out here doing these vlogs with you. They, they, they not burning, burning, they like this up there. You said you believe that if you want to. Okay. I'm telling you the truth, the naked truth. Every Filipino, every Filipina is not for you. If you got this melanin in your skin, if you Caucasian, they all up on you then. You did what? Okay. There are some that just will not like you for who you are and what you are. Not even knowing your name. Okay? That's what happened to me. I was targeted by a Filipina Chinese woman. And she went off on me. Okay? I wanted to go, but I said, nah, I'm gonna be the, I'll, be, I'll be looking at uh, the fool man that went off on her leg. Because whenever you have a man and a woman talking and it gets loud, guess who always get the blood? The man. So I kept myself low. I kept low. I kept my tone low. I kept down. Okay. So they, I could have been in jail. You know, I could have said something to a woman. And she said, well, he assaulted me. Yeah. How crazy stuff people do. I'm a man that's, I'm a foreign man in a foreign land. I could have been arrested. They could have took my passport. They could have deported me over craziness, man. You know, but I wasn't going to be belittled by her. I wasn't going to bow down and kiss her feet and move. I had no reason to move. I didn't let to the lady, and I wasn't up on her. I was socially distant. People was in the back of me, wasn't. And if I had to move, everybody had to move back. I wasn't going to bother all those people. It was a long line. So I stood my ground, and I was right. She got angry because she knew she was wrong. She was angry at me, not because I was up on her, because I was not up on her. She was angry at me because I was a black man behind her. She didn't like my cup. She didn't like who I was. She didn't like what I represented. In her mind, I represented Eve. The ladies there, they were shaking their head when, when I came up over there. And they wanted to tell the truth, but she was there, so we cannot talk to each other. The, the, the ladies there, they saw the incident. Yeah, the ladies saw and the they lady just shaking their head. Yeah, because it was she was embarrassing to the Filipinos. Filipinos don't like rules. They don't like rules. And and they don't like loudness. So the lady got loud to me and she was rude to me by giving me the finger. I did nothing to the lady, man. I don't go around here looking for trouble with Filipinos. I know better. And so, you know, I'm just saying this, man. Be careful when you come out here. Yeah. Don't listen to everybody talking about you, you ain't have no problem. You may not have no problem, but keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Okay? Something you might run up on somebody like I just did. I've been out here almost eight years. And this is the worst incident I've ever had since I've been here. I've never had this happen to me before. Now I've had close stuff where I know somebody didn't like me, but they didn't go off on me. You know? This lady went off on me. And she better be. She better be thankful that I had my self-control because I would have went off on it. It would have not been nice. 
I told her, I told Bobby, you should tell me that he, she gave you a finger because I will fight with her. No, so no, she's no. skinny and I am skinny also. <laughs> no, we both skinny. <laughs> she was skinny. She was about now. I, I'm glad she is. I didn't tell her none of that stuff because I know how she is. At least he would have went on. I told her that on the way home, of course. Because I know how she is. She would have went in there and it would have been a problem. And she might have got locked And then up. when I look at the lady, because she was turning around because she thought that Bobby was still standing there, she she looked at me. When she turned around and then she saw me, she did it immediately. She turned her head immediately. Yeah, because she knew she was wrong. And she knew that you were my wife. She knew she was wrong. And everybody else in the line knew she was wrong. So be aware, ladies and gentlemen, when you come out to the Philippines, there are people that don't care for you if you're not the melanin. They, they love the Caucasians. You know why? They don't have this melanin. Some of them look, some, most, overall, most Filipinos love everybody. Let me just say that. Most Filipinos love everybody despite your color, okay, or your race. But there are some that do not like your color and that do not like black people. They got a lot of negative stereotypes running up in their minds about blackness and what black people do. Keep that in the forefront of your mind. Don't go around and smiling at everybody because everybody ain't going to be smiling at you. Okay? And the one that ain't smiling at you ain't smiling at you for a reason and for a season. They're not your friends. Okay? Be, be, uh, be respectful to everybody. And be polite to everybody, whether you think they like you or not. That's how I do. Okay. And you might be all right. But there's some people out there that no matter what you do, they're coming for you. Okay. And be ready for that when they do it. Let's go. Ryan Trey, Bobby DC, One Nation on the group. We got to find out. We're going up, dump it up, bump up, meet the first man in there. Here's how people get ready. Well, there's a train that's coming. Don't need no ticket. Ah. If you get on board, all you need is love. Who say it again? Say sweet, sweet love. Don't need, don't need no ticket. Ah, if you get on board, get on board. Yeah, you're ready, right? Train by me, you want to know who want love. When I say two, two, you say all aboard. Two, 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 two. When I say all aboard, you say two, two. All aboard, all aboard. All of us ride this train. Y'all ready to ride the train? Bobby needs you one leg on the good one. Love. Y'all ready for the road? Car? Let's go, man. I got to find out who's rubbing up, top it up, bump up, baby, bump up, baby. Who that said they're going to beat them? I need to know. Let's go. I'm going to go in the house. I got in the house. Woo. He said, well, I'm number one today. Hey, Gunny made it, man. You made it. Congrats to you, man. You see you back on the throne again. You was off the throne for a long time, Gunny. But now you are riding again. You riding on the horse today. So good to see you, Gunny. Number one in the house today. Y'all give it prop. Y'all give it prop. Hey, it's good to be number one, man. It's good to be on the top and not the bottom, man. I don't know about you, man. But every time I do something in life, if it's good, I want to be top dog. <laughs> I want to be at the top. But if it's bad, get me, get me at the back. <laughs> Let's go. Right, everybody needs you. Who we got? Mervyn Hayes said, oh, no, bro, tell me it ain't so. You did not run into an Asian character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it was, man. She was like crazy woman to me. Chinese, I don't know what it is, man. Chinese are very argumentative. They have a high temper. They're high strong. She was Chinese Filipino. And uh, she looked at me, and I was on her radar, and she came after me. Okay, I don't know what it was. It was I don't know if it's the fact that I was just standing in the back of her that got her ear irked at me. I don't know what it was. I, I don't know. And I don't need to know. All I need to know is I'm not going to bow down to craziness. I've done nothing wrong to this day. At first, she said, move back. At first, I don't know what happened, man, but something ticked in my mind just move back. I was going to obey her. And then when I saw the people right up, I said, no, no, I'm not doing that. I said, no, I'm not going to move back. It's too many people. Is she? Oh man, it's just getting crazy after that. Let's go, Brian Train, Bobby DC, One Nation. Who we got? John Thomas, Big John in the house. Big John, Big John, Big John in the house. Go, who the? What's up? He said, Good evening, Bobby. Good evening to you, John. 
Our jobs out there in New York City, where the women are always looking pretty. Number two, Chuck won't do John, but you do just fine. <laughs> right, check about it easy one day. Should Murphy Hayes is a dumb, misled stupidity. This is dumb, misled stupidity in every way. Yeah, man, you fine. You fine everywhere. So I'm just, I brought this to you as a caution to you guys that coming out here, especially to those of you that have never been here. Because uh, what happens is when you get here, everybody's so nice. And so friendly and so relaxed and you feel like man i'm in the world and you let your guards down don't let your guards down don't be paranoid but be diligent be, be, be diligent always be alert to your surroundings what's going on what's happening and don't go for the okie doke you know and then what happens to a lot of people when they come out here they try to uh, they're around a lot of filipinos and they try to be like Filipinos. You'll never be a Filipino. I don't care how long you live out here. You'll never be accepted as a Filipino. And you'll never be a Filipino. Because you, if you don't have that color, if you don't have that birth, that, that blood in you, you're not, I don't care if you get, a, get to be a naturalized citizen of the Philippines, you will never be accepted as a full-blooded Filipino. So a lot of people are trying. It ain't dang gonna work. Let's go around chain about DC One Nation. Who we got? John Thomas. I mean, uh, he said, oh, this is horrible, Bobby D. Some people are just stupid making their point of money. Yeah, that's it, man. It's crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know what's wrong with the lady, man, but uh, that, that touched me, man. It, it got to me for a minute. You know? But I went on, I prayed about it, and I said, I didn't move on. Because she's just misguided. Uh, she picked on me for no reason. I didn't do nothing to the lady. I never opened my mouth to say nothing to her. I didn't even look at it because I, when she left, when she put me in the line, at least they put me in the line, I said, man. Because I was I was watching a good video sitting down there and she came and got me. So I was sitting in line, I was standing in line. I was watching a video. And about five minutes later, then she come up on me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, people got issues, man. And uh you have to be ready because you don't know people, a lot of crazy people in this world. And it's not just in the United States. He, everywhere you go, some people somebody some people are crazy and they do crazy things. You gotta be prepared for it. Rod train about an easy one nation. What's up? North Carolina in the house, in the house. He's here, buddy. People, North Carolina. What's up, Monroe? You good? You good, Bronze Wood? Good to see you. Right, train by the DC One Nation. Uh, Monroe, he said, hello, Murphy. Hey, what's up, my brother? Good to see you in the house today. Right, train by the DC. Uh, John, he said, hello, John. What's up, man? You good? John Thomas in the house with, with Monroe. What's up? Monroe riding train by the DC. Hello, North Carolina. <laughs> Murphy, he said, hello, North Carolina. What's up? He said, hello, North Carolina. What's up, man? You good? Roger ain't about an easy one nation. Life in North Carolina. He said, congrats, Murphy. You made it number one today. So good to see my brother, my brother, my brother. You made it, Murphy. I'm going to see you try it again. Roger ain't about an easy John Thomas. He said, good morning, one more, Murphy. Good to see y'all in the house today. Roger ain't about an Murphy Hey, he said, thank you. Always glad to see you. Roger ain't Murphy Hey, He said, good morning, John. What's up? What's up? Uh, Martin Rose, he said, uh, North Carolina in the house today. Yeah, North, North Carolina representing in the house, y'all. He from the north, I'm from the south side. We say, who? Right. <laughs> right, everybody. Uh, hey, with Kirk, what's up, Kirk? You good, man? So I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Hey, see ya. He said, hello, and good evening, brother Bobby D. And, and I take these. What's up, man? You good, South Kirk? Korea. You all right, man? So good to see you riding the train. It is Sunday night here. Therefore, it is, uh, what, Monday? It's Sunday night here? So it's yeah. uh, Saturday. Sunday, a Sunday morning. Wait a Sunday okay, morning. that's right. It's, I got, got confused. Man. It's Sunday morning, dear. So we walk here the night time and the right time and get ready to go to bed. You know what I'm saying? Good to see you, Ronnie K. What about me? It's night time, Kirk. He, uh, who you got? Uh, Marlo, he said, yes, Bobby. That's not right. That's prejudice. And that happens sometimes over here by stupid people at the door. Yeah, man. It's like, you got to realize everybody's, everybody is, don't have to possess the sensibilities and it don't possess the ability to get along with others and if some people have fears and the phobias in their minds about us and if you are an african-american or an african with this melanin in your skin you have to be alert everywhere you go i let my guards down normally when i when i'm in the public eye with the least of me i'm always doing one of these and i'm always alert but that time i let my guards down and she got on <laughs> let's go right there about an easy one day we got more hey he said her ex probably looked like you <laughs> yeah 
I probably jump on her ass and she got all over me. He said, I'm look at him, I'm gonna get him. <laughs> but you know, man, I don't know what happened to the lady. Um, you know, I, I, like, I know for a fact, this is my personal experience. Chinese people have issues with people like me. And you guys, you know what I mean? When I went to but Hong she, Kong. You know, she don't look like Chinese. She's Chinese. She's, yeah, I could tell how the lady talked. You didn't hear her talk. No, I didn't. So you can't tell. I know. She's Chinese. I don't care what you said. She was Chinese. Okay. Yeah, I wonder why she keeps saying you never heard the lady talk. When you let me put it like this: when a Chinese person talks Filipino, there's a high pitch sound and there's a tone that comes out that's unmistakably Chinese. She didn't hear. It. There's a lady across the street from us that's Chinese Filipino. She had the same tone and the same dialect or accent that let me know she's Chinese and she's slender. And when she looked at me, I could see them eyes slant. Let's go right there, Bobby D. She's like, who we got? Life in the Philippines. I mean, life in all kinds. He said, I experienced that, Bobby D, from all races, from especially my own race, because I am light skinned, which makes me no sense to me. Yeah, I know. Sometimes we have, there's a lot of people uh, inter, there's intra within our own race, and it's inter racial bias. So you have experience intra within our race. Bias towards you because you're light toned skin. That happens, man. Now, when I was coming up as a kid in high school, uh, if you if you were chocolate black like me, <laughs> you got skimming, you discriminated again too. They didn't like chocolate black like me when I'm coming up. If they were high yellow like you, they, they, they all the high yellow people got the good the good position in school, you know, they've got to be major at the girl and all that. But it, it things have changed now. Now if you're high yellow. You, they talking about you done sold out. <laughs> yeah, you sold out my row. I hope you ain't sold out, man. But yeah, man, that's how that happened. It's called intra-racial bias or intra-racial discrimination. When I was a kid, uh, if you were dark black like me, they, they bothered me because my cousin, he black, they call me dirty black, all kinds of things, man. And then now, if you if you light skin, they call you name now. So thanks, Jay. Right, Jay, everybody, who we got? Murphy, he's here. here. Her ex probably looked like you, but okay, I got that already. <laughs> Sorry about that. I went back up. Okay. Uh, right here? Okay. Uh, Murphy, he's a prejudice takes off. Yeah, man, it takes off for him to come from all different kinds of people, and you have to be prepared for it. Uh, and uh, she almost got me one minute, man. I started to move to the back. <laughs> I said, oh, I said, oh, I moved back. Was all them people got to move back. That's not, I'm not moving. <laughs> If, no, she, if she complained, she should tell to the guard. The, guard, the guard. guard should be the one who, who lets you move right. and, you know, assess to other people behind The you. guard was right there, guys. I was here. She was in front of me. The guard was to our left. She was. He was right there. He heard everything. He saw everything. If I was too close to her, all the guard had said was, so you got to move back. He didn't say nothing. Okay, that let you know I wasn't too close. All he did was watch us. You know? So it wasn't it wasn't my issue. It was her issue. Roger came by me, who we got? John. He said, uh, that's true. But remember, there's still two, there's still two wars going on. Philippines and a lot of violence in this country. Yeah, man, there's a lot of violence in the country and the Philippines, a lot of violence in the USA. And we have to be cognizant of that wherever we go in this world and know how to deal with issues. This is a life issue that uh, people with melanin in their skins deal with every day. And I, the problem that we just took me, I took it a little hard because I've never had this experience over here like this. Never. I've never had anything like this happen. This is the first. It may not be the last, but I want to bring it to you guys so you'll know uh, some of you guys that can come like John. John can come in for years. John probably never had this happen. You know? But I'm, I'm bringing it to your attention, John. People like John has been over here for a long time, a lot of time. That you know they could happen and be aware of your surroundings and what's what's around you the people around you at all times right check right we got murphy hazy and it's senseless to the to national to rational minded yes it's senseless man i couldn't understand why she was i did nothing to her i said nothing to her and i wasn't up on her i was just as distant as everybody more distant than the others you know philippines when you come out here guys you see it's supposed to be social distance line most of the Filipinos don't have social distance, but I make sure I do. This is can tell you that. I don't I don't get up on people. They get up on me. And sometimes I tell them, can you move back? But sometimes I don't I don't say nothing. I just let it happen. Because sometimes they get mad when you tell them to move back. You know? 
But yeah, uh, it's gotta be aware of your surroundings. Right, Jack Bobby? John, he said, cannot be complacent in Manila or other. I said, no, the large cities, guys. John, that's a good point, John. The larger the city, the more diligent and diligent you need to be aware. But you get you can get hurt, you can get, you get robbed, you can get stolen. I remember Lisa D and I was in Manila about two years, two, three years ago. You remember this time we was, I don't know what we were doing. We were trying to we walk in the streets. Walk, yeah. And we went into a shop, right? I don't know what we were doing. I said, this is the man watching us. There's a man watching us. He went from one, every time we got out of the shop, he would follow us to another. Got our shop, follow us to another. I said, this is the man, he was following us. And it's, he had to be careful because I think he was trying to pickpocket us or, or target us or something. And I don't know how we got out of that situation, but somehow or another, he left us alone. But uh, the stuff like that happens all the time when you're in the bigger city. There's pickpockets out there in the bigger cities. And not in the bigger cities and in smaller ones, but mostly you'll find it in the bigger cities like Manila. I've never found any pickpocketing here in the Cebu. But Manila, it happens all the time. Ryan Train, Bobby DC, One Nation. Murphy, hey, he said, I agree with that. You should be always on your guard. It can happen suddenly. Yeah, it can happen suddenly. And uh, you need to be ready. Okay, for whatever pops off, whatever jumps off on you, and when you out the country, be ready. Don't act a fool. Stay calm and be polite. And and more importantly, be right. If you're right, you have nothing to fear. Okay, you don't have nothing to fear. You, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Just do say the right thing to do what's right. But if you're wrong, you better quick apologize and <laughs> don't they have mercy on you. <laughs> Come on, uh, uh, like the, you say, oh, hello, Bobby. Like in North. You see, hello, Bobby. Sometimes people are so stupid at times and do stupid things because they are having a bad day or something else is going on. But they should not do that, and it still happens to me. Yeah, I don't know. She maybe she had a bad day, or maybe uh, she didn't like the way I looked. Maybe she thought I was too close. You know, she might have thought. You know, but I think at all when you when you deal with people like this and situations like this, you recognize that it, it is a root cause to every problem. It's a root cause to every situation. When you go through the filters and the layers of this complexity of her life, you won't, I, probably, I bet you won't find out she don't like black folk. Okay? That's the bottom root cause. Let's go, Rod Train, Bobby Dean. Who we got? Murphy Hayes. He said, funny thing about, and maybe it'd be, uh, it'd be lighting, but she looks like she has dark skin. She was, uh, she was a little bit darker. Right? She was a little bit, she wasn't light, she was a little bit darker. But she was Chinese, and she had a nasty attitude, man. Oh Lord, y'all! <laughs> I felt like I was dealing with a devil, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ever had that experience when you, somebody messed with you, and you can just see the devil on all, all in them? I'm serious, man. That's what I felt like with her, and I was ready too. You know, I wasn't ready. I wasn't moving. <laughs> she told me to move. I said, I "Ain't moving nowhere, man." I said, "I'm not bothering you." I said, "Man, could you please stop talking to me? I'm not bothering you. I'm not saying nothing. I'm minding my business." I said that on purpose so the other people can hear me and say, I they can't say I cussed you out enough. I didn't say nothing wrong, man, but she was wrong. Brian Train, Bobby DC, One Nation. John, he said, the only place that we could get probably worse human in Asia than in the U.S. is China. All the discrimination that blacks have faced there is crazy. Yeah, I know, man. Uh, they treat the Africans that are over there like dirt. I showed, I brought y'all several programs on about how they treat the people in Africa and uh, China, Africans. And the problem is Africans treat them, the Chinese, like kings and queens when they go to Africa. You know, and you know, China is rooted in most African countries now. They got they got their hand in most of the African politics. They give them loans and stuff. And so the Africans think they're their friend. But all China want is the resources of Africa. Once they've used all the resources and gotten everything from them people, they want to turn them out, let them go. One African country got the airport repossessed by China because they didn't pay back a loan recently. So, yeah, uh, Africans are treated like dirt in China, but they treat the Chinese like the king and queen. I don't know why they do that, but that's the way it is. Ron Train, Bobby Lee, One Nation, who we got? Monroe. He said, yes, Bobby Lee. She was definitely prejudiced and racist. I experienced that so many times over here in me states, Florida, Tennessee, New York, West Virginia, and you tell the story in gas station. Yeah, uh, the further south you go, and you know what? It's just not in the south. Because I drove up north too, and sometimes people, in, especially if you go to Boston, oh man, them people will tell you what you're doing here, N word. <laughs> I, I thought you, 
I said, man, I'm not supposed to hear that up in the north. <laughs> I said, you better go all back down south. But yeah, it's all over, man. You know, don't get in your mind that this job, this job in the south, it's all over, man. You have to be ready. You know, that's why I used to drive all over Verizon. I would hate to go to these small towns, man. But most of these small towns, ain't nobody like me. <laughs> all these big rednecks around there with them big old country hats and stuff, but they open for them. You know, no, I don't want some gas, sir. <laughs> I dropped down low. I, hey, I got off my high horse when I was dealing in those small towns, and I had, I had to get gas. I was running up. I, I, it was a different vibe to deal with you when I went to them store by myself. Right, tell you about it, what that show we got. Uh, uh, Monroe, he said, thanks, Bobby D, for bringing this up, as sometimes that is real. What happens to you, what you say is so stupid. Yeah, man, it happens. It happens on a daily basis. But, you know, probably problem is most people don't say nothing about it. But I normally wouldn't say nothing about this because I would just chalk it up to ignorance. And it is ignorance. But because I know a lot of you guys are coming here, right? I want to make sure that you don't get complacent and you don't think everybody for you out here because everybody's not for you, especially wherever you go because you have melanin in your skin. Okay? Ryan Train Bar, we got uh Gerald Leon. What's up, Gerald? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Gerald, he said, it's good that you're telling people the both the good and the bad and the ugly about the cookies. Panoa and Karen, great subject, but sad you got treated off. Yeah, man, it was terrible, man. I didn't feel good about it. I, I was talking to Lisa D all the way home about it. I was upset about it. But then again, I prayed, get, get myself calmed down, relaxed about it. But she showed her ignorance. And she so showed her rudeness because her own people didn't like what she did. I had, I, you know, I could see if I said something to the lady, I pushed her or stepped on her toe, something, you know, like that. I could understand her coming off on me, but I did none of that. I didn't even know she was there. I just, you know, watch my video. And she came off on me crazy like, man. Gerald Liam is in, is in the Manila with his lady. So good to see you, Gerald. Hope you're having fun with your lady. Having a good time. Wow. Good to see you, man. Send me a picture, Gerald. Send me a picture. Ron Chain Barry, who we got? A Christian. What's up, Christian? You good, man? So good to see you, Ron Chain Barry. Easy one nation. Welcome to Love Train. Welcome to Train. Say hello, Bobby. How long have you lived in the Philippines? What kind of challenges do you black space in the Philippines? Christian, I asked you got two questions. First question, how long? Okay, I, I moved here in 2014, December 24th, to be exact, 2014. So how many years then? Eight, seven, something like that. So I've been here a while. And uh, second question was, what kind of challenges do you black space in the Philippines? I, to be honest with you, the, the only challenges you may face is uh well, the only challenge you may face is trying to find products for you here <laughs> like you know I mean, you have to have some pomade and stuff if, if you wear heavy here trying to get a good haircut stuff like that trying to find uh clothing that fits you because most uh people they come here are larger than the people here shoes sizes and stuff like that so if you come here guys and you plan on playing long term bring as much of your own clothes as you can because trying to find clothes out here you is very hard okay so you can find them but you got to look hard and you're going to pay more uh as far as the, uh, dealing with the people out here most of the time uh christian you will not have this incident that i had that i recorded it's, it's unusual it, it's in my opinion it's a rarity i told you i've been out here about eight years now i've never experienced it's the first time that i've had anything like this happen okay so uh, uh it's an rare it's a rarity it's unusual, but you will find it, as John said, more in the larger cities. And see, who's a large city? And as large as it is, and I've been there so long, I've never run into this. So I thought it would it would noteworthy to bring it out so that you all know uh, there's a sector, there's a section of people that just don't like blackness. Okay, I've done a lot of these. And be aware of uh, they call they call black people negro. Yeah, negro. Uh, negro means black. The term Negro is black in Spanish. And when they the Spanish founded founded the Philippines or whatever they uh they, they were colonial in, uh, over the Philippines, Philippines in colonial times, so they ruled them for over 400 years. So when they discovered the Philippines, the people were small and dark skinned. Okay. They wasn't dark to me, but they were small and dark skinned. And they called them negritos, okay? 
the gritos in Spanish means little black people, small black people, or tiny black people. So when you come out here, somebody says, Negro, Negrito, Negrito, that means you're black. But it's not a dark derogatory term, as some people may take it. A lot of the cities are called Negro, Negro Occidental, uh, you know, a lot of different terms like that. So don't feel bad when it, if you hear that. It's just the way they talk out here. Ron Chan by releasing One Nation. Remember, he said, incidents like that make you just want to reach out and touch him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to reach out. <laughs> I want to reach out and touch you so bad, but I, I couldn't do it. The Holy Ghost wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Let's go, Ron Chan by releasing One Nation. Rain Man coming. Rain Man coming. Rain Man, Rain Man, Rain Man. Rain man. Come take some of the Rain Man for the. Donate to the nation. Yeah, I gotta deal with them. Thank you so much. He said two, 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 two. Right back into my brother from another. Mama. Today, I think he just got up. <laughs> I didn't know that. It, it, it's early. I'm working over there. Early morning. It is about what seven forty. Yeah, it's early. But well, I, I brought this late out. It's eight forty-five p.m. here. But it's early in the morning. I gotta do a damn for, for Terry Fleming riding train by the easy One Nation. Right. All right. Uh, I haven't done a dance on this thing so long. It's trying to figure out what to do. Oh, hold on, y'all. I got anything? Right there. Okay. All right. Let's go, big mom. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the original players. He was a layer. Rawns in the house. I said, You're in the house. working man in the business. Conversations you hear in immigration will piss you up. Yeah, I, I've heard some of that stuff in immigration. 
But remember, I, I before I had my 13A, I would go up there every month. And back in them days, it was always crowded. Now it's not as crowded as, as it used to be when you go up there because they, you have to make an appointment now to go up there. And they've got everything regulated because of the pandemic. But yeah, back in them days, man, it was always crowded. Some people in there, pissed, foreigners pissed off about everything about Filipinos, but yet they still stay in there, you know? They don't like the Philippines. They don't like that. They don't like that. They always whining and crying and complaining, but they still here. You know, if you don't like it, get down. Nobody's making you stay here. Isn't that right? Huh? <laughs> but yeah, I'm, you many of you won't won't have this uh won't have this because it's an unusual situation. I think I just caught this lady. Lady spent some bad. She had a bad time or whatever. I don't know what it was, but she took it out on me. And it's okay, I can deal with it. I'm, I'm a man, I'm a man. I'm a, I'm a grown man, you know what I'm saying? And might be my dear, because uh, they know that black people are like, I can't stay in Africa, and then they had a bad COVID over there. No, that's not it, Miss Let me tell you what I think. I, I'll give you this Hi. hypothesis, okay? I think that she saw, y'all remember the incident recently on TV where a big black man beat up a tiny Filipino and almost, I mean, he, he decimated that lady. He almost took her head off. He hit her 125 times, stumps and kicks. And then on top of that, the black man spit on her. Okay? I think things like that, when they see things like that on TV and they, they translate it over to whoever's black, that's, I'm bad like that. You know? But that's why I say uh, you don't know what's going on in people's minds, but yeah. you, so if you have this color in you, you better be alert. I don't care where you are, you know. And, and you know, like Pumpkin Joe said, it never happened to him. But that, yeah, guess what, Pumpkin Joe, never happened to me either till yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Things happen, and if you're not ready for it, you could be caught up. You know. So thank God I was able to maintain my composure, because if I was ten years younger. It would have been me and her. <laughs> it was 10 years ago. I said, what you say that? <laughs> we would have called at it, man. The guard would have had to get me off of her. Nah, let's play it, man. Brian Chain, who we got? Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank you. Girl. Appreciate your donation to the nation. He said, get a strong coffee on me to recover from that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to need it, man. Let's do a damn for Gerald Lima. Brian Chain by the Lady One Nation. All the love. We got it, D. Oh, my goodness. So what you trying to do? Might be, though it might might be some racism in the Philippines, 
the prices I pay over there will make up for it. <laughs> uh, Terry Fleming, I guarantee you, when you come over here, you won't have any incidents like I did. I just had one out. I've been here eight years. Man, ain't, ain't nothing happened to me like that. I never had that happen to me before. So very seldom, this is a rarity, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. Very seldom, it's like Pumpkin Joe, he never had nothing happen to me. Pumpkin Joe came here like, like two or three years after I did. So, you know, it, the longer you're out here, the more you're going to alert, be alerted about stuff and see stuff, and the more stuff might be liable to happen to you. But first time you come out here, mind your business, do your thing. Remember, Titan. Remember also when, when we shopped in, in the supermarket in Ayala, and then you was with me in the counter, and then don't bring that up. <laughs> they're talking about you. Don't bring that up. Y'all already, I already told them about that. Yeah, but that's that's nothing compared. Well, yeah, compared to this incident, yeah. that was nothing. She was talking about how long ago was that? A month ago, a couple months ago. Now? Uh, we were in, we were in the other mall. We were getting groceries, and uh, the, there was a there was a guy, you know, the box, the bagger, the bag boy, was bagging the groceries, and the sales lady at the cashier, she was cashier and the phone with the groceries, and I was. I walked away. I said, Lisa, you can have it. You go right. She said, So I walked away and I waited outside the line for her. She was still in the line waiting for to check her out. And she said, uh, the, the boy said something about my. Hey, the cashier. They were talking. I mean, she was talking to the boy. And then, you know how they talk, they look at you and they laugh, something like that. And then I heard something bad. So I, I was I was talking to, I mean, I was talking to the, to the cashier. And then. I was trying to get a picture, you know, just to to scare her, taking a picture, and then she flipped it to the other side. She didn't want her. She didn't want to be reported. Uh, Lisa D heard them talking about my uh, private parts. My, you know, they they say something bad, like all black men, you know what? They got you know what I'm saying. So she didn't like it, and she said, "What did you say?" She she stopped them and said, "What did you say?" And she was angry about it. She went to re- she went and reported it. She went and the lady turned her badge around so she can see her name. She went to the office and reported it. I don't know what they did anything about it, but uh, you know, stuff like that happens all the time, man. When you're black, you know, that's just another incident. But I would say that's nothing compared to this incident. You know what I'm saying? So be wary, man. I mean, you can sit up here and say, oh, well, it ain't never happened to me. Maybe it never happened to you. It ain't never happened to me either. But it happened, right? Let's go, Roger. <laughs> Who we got? Oh, boy, we know he's the best right, brother. I see, I see man. All right, uh, uh, Terry said, I'm coming to the Philippines because America is okay. I said that too, yeah, man. Okay, that's it. All right, guys, it's been really huh? more. Where that's it, China is the worst of the worst. When it comes oh, I got one more. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Okay, uh, Murphy, he said, China's the worst of the worst when it comes to rape. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Chinese, man. Uh, they're very, very particular people. I, you know, not they always say, well, you hate China. No, I don't. One of, one of my best friends um, in the USA was a Chinese guy, okay? And he, he was uh, my computer tech when I had problems with my computer. Back in them days, I didn't know how to fix it, but I know how to fix my stuff now. I would go to him, we would talk a lot, you know? And uh, we became good friends, you know? So it's not that I don't like Chinese. I just don't like the way they treat black sometimes. This guy didn't really like that. So not all Chinese are that. There are only some of them that way, okay? So uh, it's exceptions to every move. But for for me going to Hong Kong and Singapore, because there's a lot of Chinese in Singapore. Singapore is almost like China. Uh, they treated, I could tell how they treated me versus Lisa D. They treated her like a queen. They thought she was one of them. They thought she was Singaporean, and they thought she was a Hong Kong for Chinese when we went there. So they treated her good. What kind of me? It was damn back you know? You know, <laughs> I never want to touch me. So you can, if you African American, you can tell that stuff, man. But you know, you can't take it too personal. You got to know, understand why they're doing. When you understand why they do and how they do what they do, you're gonna be off. You're not all right with it. It's never nice to to understand that or to deal with that. But you understand. You have an understanding of what's going on, and you can be more, uh, I guess, accommodating for it and let it slide rather than get angry about it because. If we were to get angry about every incident that happened to us as, as African Americans, it would be, be some angry people. You remember Angry Man on Martin's show? He's always, 
you don't want to go around like that. But I brought that to you today just to let you know uh, there are still tidbits of uh, racial undergoings, undertones in this country. And overall, and I will say this over and over, the Philippines is not a highly prejudiced nation. Most people here love everybody, no matter what your color or your race. So get that in your mind. However, you have to be aware that there are some that do not like black. They don't like your color. And it's not being personal about you, but they don't know you. They just want to be around black people. They don't like the color black. Black in their minds is bad. Right? That's it, man. Uh, it's been real, it's been real, it's been real. real. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. This is Bobby D. And the Total Queen, Lisa D. Take care. God bless. And peace. peace.